Hi, welcome to this Java tutorial from Lipus.com. In this tutorial, let's learn about Java abstract class. So, what is an abstract class? An abstract class is basically something where you'd not you would not be able to create an instance of that class. Let's just look at an example before we discuss anything further. So, how do you create an abstract class? This is by calling abstract class. I'm creating an inner class. But even if you create a normal class, this is the same behavior that it would explain. Uh, abstract uh, class, I would want to create an abstract class animal. And it's the same syntax as the uh, usual class, except that there is a keyword abstract. Uh, the other thing is in an abstract class, you can define abstract methods. What do you mean by an abstract method? Let's define one. Abstract, uh, I would want to define So, what we have done right now is create an abstract class called animal and what we have also done is created an abstract method bark. So, uh, different bar animals bark in different ways. I can't, I mean, the designer of this particular class animal doesn't want anybody to be able to create an instance of animal themselves. What he wants to happen is he wants somebody to be able to extend his class and take the functionality which is already offered in the animal class and define the bark function and then use that particular class. So uh, let's now write a small test. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'll write a test um, public void uh, test creation. So I want to try create an abstract class. Let's see what happens. Uh, I would say animal, animal is equal to new animal. So, what happens? What you'd see is cannot instantiate the type. So, basically, an abstract class, uh, as Java says now, cannot be instantiated. So, that's the feature of the abstract class. Uh, now, how do I create a class which uh, extends this abstract class? Let's see. Let's now create a concrete class dog which extends this abstract class animal. So now as soon as I create this class, you would see that uh, the compilation error which is dog must implement the animal.bark method. So that's basically because we have declared that this is an abstract method. There are two options. Either I can call this class abstract and then nobody will be able to create the instance of a dog class also or I can remove the abstract and actually implement the method back. So what I can do is implement the method back saying back return so now the dog is no longer abstract uh, dog implements the uh, method abstract method which is defined in animal and let's see how we can test that I can say dog dog is equal to assert equals So now let's see if this works. Right click, run as J test, and it works. That's good. So we have, uh, like, we are able to now create an abstract class, uh, extend it, and then uh, create and uh, like test the creation of that particular thing. Usually. The reason why you would want to create an abstract class is because abstract class already has some functionality. For example, every animal, let's say, has a name. In that case, I would probably have a private variable here, private uh, string name, and probably a constructor also defined, accepting name as input string name, and this dot name is equal to name, for example. And I'm also like creating a getter for that method uh, 
I'll say get name. So that's now the dog has a variable. So abstract class can have variables or member variables and also they can have public methods. So that's an important thing to note. An abstract class does not need to have abstract methods only. It can really have uh, real public methods. Obviously, like I have defined a constructor in animal with one parameter. I have to add the constructor in the uh, extending class also. So now this solves the problem. But now I have to give the name to a dog. So I'll say dog Tom. And I'll add another test to this saying sl equals Tommy comma dog dot name dog dog dot get name. So this is the get name method is actually inherited by dog from animal. So that also is available and now you'd be able to run it and check that everything is fine. So what we have done is created an abstract class with an abstract method and then created a concrete class extending that and we have tested that it really works uh, and the other thing which we have looked at is that the abstract class can have public methods of its own it can have member variable member variables of its own also um, and one important feature that is a result of abstract class is something called polymorphism so if i say animal animal is equal to new dog so what i'm doing is creating a dog and storing it in a reference of animal and now i can actually do animal dot bark and animal dot get name to get the values from the dog so run as j so an instance of an so a reference of an animal class is actually behaving like a dog this is basically what we call as polymorphism we'll look at polymorphism in detail in other videos uh, you can refer to the playlist below for uh, the other java videos um, if you like this video uh, please let us know by liking or commenting uh, thumbs up also don't forget to subscribe until next time